things I, I don't remember where you said it, but that you recognize that in a sense you were a priestess. Yes. I think, um, gosh, you know, and it was it, it, sort of even saying that it's there's no in our culture there's no place for a woman. I mean, you can be a woman priest now, I guess, um, it, through um, the Episcopalian Church, but to claim oneself as a priestess um, was something that you know I don't do a lot in public necessarily. But that what I have found is that that's my true self. My true role is is to be a priestess, is to be a conduit for spirit. And really what that means is to be able to invoke um, energies and to hold, to be a container for the sacred and whatever, wh whatever needs to happen in that space. When I led groups, it was holding a container large enough, you know, with others to allow a transformative process to take place, whether it be in a ritual or in an evening of, you know, lecture, discussion, um, mm. an evening of mask making or something, you know, creative. We tried to weave a lot of different mo modalities into our curriculum so that it wasn't just, you know, head up, but really, I mean, Gaia Spirit Rising was all about helping women, it was for women in particular, helping women make that descent into their bodies, into the body of the earth and into their own bodies and work on their own healing as a way of, of healing and transforming the earth as well. Mm. You know. And let's let them also know that, uh, did you do this before or after that you perform weddings? Did that you do came that? later. Oh, it came later to do the weddings? Yes. Well, it actually was quite um, a lovely transition for me after doing the Gaia program for eight years. And really, that became, we were very much, Rini Hope was my co-facilitator, co-creator, um, lives here in Seattle. And um, we were very much participant leaders. Um, we created a container for our own healing as well as um, the healing of the other women we particip we would go through even though we were facilitating we would also um, have our own invocations our own um, work that we were asking healing around and um, so we we very much um, it was it provided that process for ourselves and at the end of that time it was um, it was a time when I had been leading nine month long groups for about 16 years. You know, the first half was through at the, the Chinook Learning Center. We had a program called Course Studies, which is nine month long. And then when we created Gaia, it was nine months long. And it just, I came to a place where I could no longer do the work. And it felt like the, the, the energy for the program was waning. You know, we sort of created Guy at the crest of the women's spirituality movement about 1989 was our beginning. And mm -hmm. eight years later, you know, we weren't getting the numbers that we had been, and my energy was waning for it. And so I was very much struggling with how then do I, what happens to the priestess in me if I can't express this through this vehicle that I've created? Mm -hmm. um, because we we would do a, a major three day long ritual in each quarter, each of the um, three segments, three months. Um, every three months, we would sort of integrate our learning through um, a weekend long ritual. And so I was really grieving that loss um, when I experienced Sarah's death, which is the article that you were referring to that took me in, into my first um, experience of a death, um, was one of our uh, mm -hmm. first Gaia year group. One of our members uh, died, and I happened to be... This is 1993, was it? Yes. This is at the same time that Gaia was, Gaia was dying, in a way, for me. Inner, it was an... It was a choice, but it felt like, you know, a choiceless choice. It felt like it was time to move on, but I didn't know what I was moving on to. And so it was at that time that I, um, that I experienced uh, Sarah's death, and it was quite transformative for me. She was um, really ahead of her time. I mean, she set up her own death in her own home. Yeah, why do you think she did? I mean, how did she know to do that? I don't know. She just, uh, Sarah was someone who was always searching for um, 
you know, really expressing herself. Her experience in Gaia was turning into um, the goddess and understanding what the goddess uh, was in, you know, the prehistoric goddess and how she could express the feminine spirit that she felt inside of herself. And I don't know, she just knew that she wanted to be at home surrounded by her family. And not only that, but she wanted to lie in state in her own home before she was cremated. And so this was long before I did my training in death midwifery, but it was certainly what initiated me. And, um, you know, the article, in, I express how I had always had a fear of death as a young child and had been, um, I think so many of us do fear it because we're not exposed to it. Even the funerals that I've been to, I wasn't allowed to look in the casket or, you know, be close to a dead person. And so to be there with Sarah and to, you know, to, to support her journey with chanting in the way that I'd done through the program, here I was chanting and drumming for her as she was crossing over and she was in the living death excuse me mm -hmm. and all of you this is this is if you go on our website all of what Marilyn talks about is on well she actually there's two versions one that was printed in the um, what was the name of that magazine mythic journeys mythic journeys mm -hmm. but then you have a, another version on your website yes. that gives a little more details in your personal life yes but um, you you explain that she was in her living room and the kitchen was there and her family was there having dinner having dinner mm -hmm. and they invited you and uh, then the husband came up and asked you to chant for Sarah and yes is that chant a long chant that you did for her um, not that long I mean it, it actually might be a good one to to chant because it's the Inanna chant I mean I, I chanted several chants for her I spent a good hour there um, chanting with her and I realized that I you know creating the space and was the same space where I had supported her her metaphorical death now was supporting her physical death but it was the same thing and the metaphorical death Marilyn would be something within ourself like say you're dying to something in your past or like in your case it, when you had that divorce mm -hmm. you had to die to the person who was in that relationship is that would that be a metaphorical death yes um, I think met metaphorical death is anything that where you're losing something that is precious to you something is taken away um, something is shattered and usually it feels like you are dying I mean I um, physically you know I lost a lot of weight I didn't I couldn't take in food I just I went through a, a very radical transformation and it felt like really four years mm -hmm. before I became more fully myself in a different way, sort mm -hmm. of, you know, reconfigured in a way. Um, mm. And what what the experience of Sarah's death in, 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 you know, being able to be there, I, you know, I was there enchanting for her the night before and then the next day as my work schedule allowed, I dropped by to see how she was doing and she had just died. So I was there with another uh, Gaia woman who was a nurse and we had the privilege of washing her body and you know, chanting as we did this, mm. and and um, dressing her and laying her out on, on her bed so that friends and family could come and say goodbye to her. Um, it, it was just so beautiful. It, you know, the the doorway between the two worlds. It's the, it opens in a birth. Anybody who's at a birth knows that experience of the sacred doorway that opens in the same portal opens when a person dies and I think it was just being present in that is which is what was so transformative for me and it felt to me like Sarah um, didn't just disappear she went into everything into mm -hmm. all of nature and into me I felt like I carried a part of her with me and um, I was no longer afraid of death after that <laughs>